Can you explain what Operation Telic was and your role within it? Operation Telic is the uh, is the operational name for the deployment to Iraq post um, post the, the, the Second Gulf War, and Operation Telic um, initially uh, was uh, the war fighting um, uh, operation, but also it developed into the uh, to the stability and stabilisation of the Iraqi nation. Uh, and so there was a transition. So it didn't suddenly go from stopping the war to it's all peace. And what we're doing is, uh, you know, is trying to maintain um, what would be a normal situation. What, you'd, what, what happened in Telic is there was a transition. There's still counterinsurgency, and that was ongoing throughout the whole of the Telic operations, right up until the end. But the intention there is to um, was to to. to to try and put the Iraqi people into position where they could self-govern and also uh, secure the, look after their own security, whether that's internal or, or external. So some of the troops from the Fusiliers TA um, were sent to Iraq. Did you agree with this? So Op Telic 3 was mm -hmm. the first opportunity uh, that the London Regiment had to deploy uh, soldiers and operations. And that was as a formed company at the time. Um, I did agree with that, you know, as a, as a TA officer, as a TA soldier, um, I think that the, the TA, Territorial Army, has, has a role to play in supporting the regular army and where, it, you know, where it's able to do that, it should take its place. So I remember quite distinctly on Telic 3, I was... Um, I think all of the company commanders in the Lunar Regiment were in competition to see who would uh, command that company. And I think everyone at the time wanted to, uh, to be the company commander, and, uh, and that competition was quite stiff. So throughout your Army career, you've been promoted to Major and then to Lieutenant Colonel. Have there been, been any new duties that you've disliked? There's been none that I have disliked. I think... Um, of the ones that I probably didn't enjoy as much are probably the uh, the the appointments and uh, postings where I haven't had um, direct contact with the soldiers uh, and and not necessarily having to be in command but the idea that you can be in the field work with the soldiers and use the skills that you've you've practiced that you've trained but also uh, uh, they're, they're they're fun, you know, being in the field, having, you know, control of your weapon, commanding men in the field is really what, you know, being a commander in the army is, is about. I think at a certain stage you will lose contact with the soldiers uh, and for some people they, you know, that's part of career progression. You know, because you're going to move on, you're going to hold greater rank, you're going to have greater influence over those soldiers, but the contact will go away. And for me, what I enjoyed most was contact with the soldiers. And, you know, wh whether that be training them or listening to their stories or, you know, just trying to cajole them into doing what you, uh, you know, what was expected of them. But also, you know, soldiers teach you a lot about yourself because if you don't have a particular way or style that agrees with them, they're very quick to let you know. Compared to being a regular fusilier, <coughs> what, are, what are the benefits of being a lieutenant colonel? Um, you know, it may seem crass or uh, inappropriate, but um, the, the, the perks of being commissioned are that generally you, um, you, you move in circles of people who have greater influence, who have a uh, higher rank, and uh, they generally go to nicer places and have nicer dinners. <laughs> um, what is your opinion on the role of the TA? Do you think they should do more within the British Army? I think the TA has a capability to do more, but it has to be tempered with the, the politics and the practicality. So, for instance, um, it's an ideal for uh, a territorial army soldier to deploy on operations in support of the regular army whenever they, they need to do so. And if you consider that might be um, on a longer time scale in between, you know, maybe three to five years, that's quite manageable. 
and in, in some ways it, it works very well. But if you put too much pressure on the TA and you expect them to deploy more frequently, what you'll find is not only does that put pressure on the, the fusilier and his family, but also on his employer. It makes them less attractive uh, to an employer and, and so they may view him uh, as somebody that may not have a good career stream because he's going to be taken away for up to a year at a time. So I think it's great, I think it's worthy that the, the, you know, and, and good that the, the TA can support the regular army but it has to be within limitations. Have you had a particular highlight of your army career so far? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one because there, there, are, there are great highlights for different reasons. Um, you know, some of them might be social, some of them you know, might be operational, some of them might be just a, a personal achievement at the time. I think for, for me, the, the highlight of my career in a TA um, was commanding a, a reconnaissance platoon. And the, the peculiar thing about a reconnaissance platoon is it has a lot of uh, autonomy in the field and that means that the commanding officer will set you a task but how you choose to go about that task and, and how you conduct uh, that task is very much up to you and also the reconnaissance platoon tends to have soldiers who are more experienced um, who may be considered to have greater ability so you're working uh, with you know the cream of the crop there so that means you have guys that you can depend on uh, and I enjoyed that because it was a platoon that I built up. It, was, uh, it, it wasn't it was there in terms of the number of people, in terms of their skills. And I recruited people in and I trained them to become good reconnaissance soldiers. And the pinnacle of that was that we deployed on a, on a divisional exercise, Eastern Harrier, uh, which culminated in uh, live firing exercises but also uh, exercises against one Royal Anglian who I was just about to join. So, uh, you know, to, to me to be able to deploy a full reconnaissance platoon uh, for, you know, a, a full field exercise was, was something that I was very, very proud of at the time. Would you encourage more people to join the Fusilier TA? Absolutely. I, I think for the, for the TA Fusiliers particularly, um, being based in London, having a, a great heritage, but also having a very wide range of opportunities uh, that maybe some other uh, TA units may not have. So the fact that they're in London, they have access to the, the Fusilier network, uh, for example, the, the headquarters here in the Tower of London, the facilities around London, the ceremonial duties that you might get involved with, and the people that you're going to meet um, I think particularly for the, for the Fusilier TA is going to you know, raise itself above maybe other TA units. Um, now finally, is there anything you regret from your career? Ooh, now that's a live question really because you know, it, it's not just you know, how, you, it's how you treat regret generally. Um, I think for me, I think the timings didn't work out that you know, I, I I would have had the opportunity to deploy on maybe Telic or Herrick. I think that's probably one of my regrets. Um, I was very happy to be uh, involved with the TA and to have a have a active role in those deployments. To have actually deployed, I think, would have been uh, just the, the icing on the cake for me. Well, thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much.